The sampler emitter is quite similar to the uh, the Maya surface emission, except it's much more powerful in the, the types of features that you have available to you. So I'll start off by creating a sampler emitter and run you through the attributes. Um, similarly to the uh, the regular surface emission, you can map the rate with maps, but as, as opposed to just being 2D maps, they can be any shading network. So it can be uh, 3D textures, it can be shaders, blend surface models, um, lighting, and so on. All can be used to control um, your rate map. Uh, the same thing for your distance, so you can map the min and max distance using maps, so you can have particles emit off of a surface with more of an offset um, based on UV parameters or some other noise functions uh, that you want. Uh, the direction for the speed of emission also can be mapped. Um, so your th your three colors of red, green, and blue can be used to control the direction in U uh, along the normal or or in V of uh, of the particle emission. Um, same thing with the speed. You can map the speed. You can map the randomness of the speed as well as the inherit, so that some parts of your your object in motion inherit more motion than other parts of your object. Um, and then you've got this thing called shading samplers, and this is sort of where the, the power really comes in. So a shading sampler basically allows you to sample any shading network that's um, and use the geometry that it's being emitted from as your shading parameters. So uh, to show you what I mean, I'm going to open up the multi-lister. And on my character right now, he's got uh, this blend shader with these two lights on it. So I can take that blend shader and middle mouse button drag it onto the shader and I want it to affect the RGB PP of the particles that are emitted so you can see that the particles right now are being emitted off the surface with some speed I'm going to just turn that off and go into these particles and make them a little bit bigger so that you can see them that's kind of big All right. so you see these particles being emitted on the surface and they're still flat shaded gray because the particles don't have any per particle values so you, you have two options you can manually create the RGB PP attribute or in the sampler emitter um, we're specifying that we want the results of this shaders out color to go into RGB PP I can just go in and turn on auto add on attributes and now if I go back to my particle object when I step forward a frame it's gonna see oh I needed to add RGB PP to this particle attribute and it does it for you so now when the particles are born they're actually born with color now I'm gonna turn on a bunch more emission rate Okay, so we're having a lot of particles being emitted. And now if you look at the particle colors, sort of zoom out back here, and you can see that those particles are actually illuminated exactly the same. So these same lights and the same blend shader that were being used to light the surface are also what's being used to light the particles. Now this is static. Um, and if you take a look at the shading fetal example you'll understand uh, the difference but basically emission happens once and the particles are born and whatever attributes they were born with are what they stick um, with for their life if you want to have the shading update dynamically as the particles move then you transition over into the shading field a couple of other uh, key features here um, we have this output mapping uh, what that means is where the, the points on the surface where those particles were emitted from um, there's already surface information there so they know their position on that surface uh, they know the the normal of the surface the UV and the tangent parameters so all of these attributes can be directly initialized on your particle at birth which uh, which gives you a lot more information to either generate unique expressions on creation or just have your particles carry that information with them over their lifespan 